Well, good morning. We're here in the snow in Zwickau to take a look around the Zwickau factory. One of the most advanced, if not the most advanced car factories anywhere in Europe. Not the largest, mind you, at 1.8 million square meters, the size of 252 football pitches. It's positively medium sized in factory terms. VW's Wolfsburg factory is triple the size of this one. But here's why this one is so important. It's the first factory anywhere in the world to transform itself from ICE car production to EV production. 1.2 billion euro was spent making that change happen. And it's not something that's been seen anywhere else in the world. And here's the thing, every other ICE car factory in the world is going to have to make that same change in the next five to 10 years. What we have here is a glimpse into the future. So let's go take a look around and try to understand how exactly you transition an entire factory from petrol to electric. Farnborough, Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney. The world's number one festival of clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the body shop. Of the 1.2 billion euros that were spent refurbishing this facility, transforming it into an EV factory, 400 million of that went on this facility, just on the body shop. In fairness, it is the size of 22 football pitches, so fair enough. What's really interesting is this facility is almost entirely automated now, 90% automated, the procedures that happen in this hall. The nice thing is, by the way, just as many jobs as there were before. No one lost their job, they just got retrained. Instead of assembling the cars themselves, they now program and service the machines that service the cars. The thing about taking a tour of this factory and shooting a video in it is there is quite a lot of walking from place to place because, well, it's huge. Hence why you'll see bicycles strewn around the facility. That is how the workers get from place to place. Otherwise, you just spend your whole day strolling. So while we're strolling, let me just give you a couple of key numbers that someone just passed on to me. 330,000, that's the number of cars that this facility will produce annually when it's running at its peak. Yesterday, they hit a daily production record in the MEB era, 1,250 cars in one day. Uh, to give you some idea, that's 330,000. That equates to triple the number of EVs purchased in the UK last year, or about a third of Europe's total EV sales last year. It's a lot of cars. Three years ago, this factory made petrol cars, and now it makes exclusively electric cars. Can you just give us a very small idea of what goes into transforming a factory of this size so dramatically? How much does that cost, first of all? Volkswagen has spent 1.2 billion euros into this factory, and you can see the difference straight behind of me. Everything is new, and we have made the decision in the year 2018 that was clear as we'll stop building the old cars and we'll move into the electric vehicles. Of that big investment that was spent in refurbishing the factory, I think 400 million was just on the body shop. Yes. Why was that such a key area to focus on? Basically everything is new. So we needed to have a complete new underbody. Now the old car had in front the engine and then you had the combustion, etc. And now we have a complete new battery pack in the middle of the car. This is why the car is handling so fine, because the weight is in the middle of the car and then it's down in the car. So what you can see is complete new underbody, complete new body, so everything is new.
Well, here's something you don't see every day. This is the VW Hall of Batteries. This is where the battery cells arrive on a train, are immediately loaded onto these shelves via robots, what else? And then when called upon by the assembly hall, are transported out that door via electric lorries. A total of 3,000 battery cells can be stored in this hall at any given time. So welcome to Hall 6. This is the assembly line, or I should say assembly lines, because, well, there's four of them in here. And at first glance, things are not so different to how they would have been back in the petrol days when this factory was building golfs. Fundamentally, what you have is people putting small bits together and then big bits together. Ultimately, the marriage of the platform with the drivetrain in it to the body. And the production line is predominantly still human. It's about one third automated versus the body shop, which is 90% automated. But what's really interesting is the flexibility of this production line. Look behind me. We've got a mishmash of MEB cars here. It's ID4, ID4 GTX, Q4, ID4. They're all mixed together. They don't do one hour of Audi Q4s and then an hour of ID4s. The factory is designed in such a way that they can build these cars all together, mix them up without it slowing things down. And that is economy of scale. That is how you build lots of cars very quickly in a cost-effective manner. Fancy a world exclusive? I give you the new ID5, sort of. So you know how I'm always banging on in videos about bespoke EVs being way better than the after 40 ones that are basically ICE cars with the engines ripped out. This is why, you see that? That's a naked MEB platform. The really important thing to note here is that everything above that is passenger space. The battery, the motors, all the gubbins is slotted underneath that flat skateboard design. Everything above it is for your feet. If that was an ICE car platform, you'd be seeing space taken up with a transmission tunnel. You'd see room in the front taken up by the engine. When you build EVs from the ground up, this is what you get to do. You put all the important bits in the floor and you have all the room to yourself. So I mentioned a minute ago that the assembly line is not so radically different to how it was before Zwickau was converted to EV production. However, what you're seeing behind me is one of the most dramatic differences and something that is unique to this factory. What you're seeing is robots assembling or essentially installing the cabin, the dashboard, into the cars. This comes already built as one piece from the manufacturer and a robot slides it into the car without the car stopping. It's still moving along the production line and it's then fixed into place by human beings. The other thing that's really interesting is the fact that that's coming as one piece from the brands. Obviously the platforms and much of the hardware are the same, so the interior is one of the places where brands really get to express themselves and differentiate their models from other MEB models. So they do that themselves at home, send it fully built, and then a big robot drops it into the car. Cool. So this is quite interesting. Not all robots are brought in to make things faster. Some are here purely to take away jobs that people didn't much like doing. This robot here is drilling screws into a panel that will go into the back seat of an ID4, I think. And the reason that a robot is doing this job now is because people used to do their backs in doing it. It wasn't very nice ergonomically. And that is another type of job that they've looked to reduce via the use of robots. So here behind me, we have an interesting example of the fact that you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel at every stage of production when transforming an ICE factory from an EV factory. Behind me, we have uh, seats being fitted to the car and the process is exactly the same as it was back when we were building petrol golfs here. Same machinery, same process. The only difference is that now the employees are stood on a conveyor belt, which means again, the production line never stops. The employees are moving along with the cars, installing the seats. It's just the little things like that that economize the production that allow you to build more cars faster. We know that the sort of uh, CO2 emissions of the factory is down dramatically over the last 10 years. Can we talk a little bit about what the key changes have been made to get that number down by, I think, 60%? First of all, what we've done is we have our own power plant. So we take gas, produce electricity, 
and we use also the heat which we can be used for our processes for example in the paint or to heat the factory. The second thing is what we've done is um, we are only buying green electricity from Austria. So we are using the power plants in Austria to get the electricity to Zwickau. And then finally, and this is going to be an annoyingly simplistic question, but I've always wanted to ask this. Which one is easier to build? Electric cars, petrol cars? With the modularity of electric cars, once you have the facility like this, is it a simpler production process? It's a little bit less production process because, for example, you don't have all the hoses and connections which you have in the, in the old cars. But it's all new and you need to train your people in the new technologies. For example, the guy which had in the past, you know, has mounted um, the combustion or has mounted the engine into the car. Now he needs to do other connections and he needs to do put in the electricity into the car. So the work content has changed. But after everybody is trained on the new processes, I think it's even running better. So this is going to be the least visually impressive section of the video, but maybe just the most important. There's a couple of things you need to do when transforming an entire factory from one way of doing things to another. One is spend a huge amount of money on new equipment, new machinery, new robots. The other is you have to do something about your staff. You have a, thousands of employees that understand doing things a certain way that need to learn how to do it another way. So what we have here is VW's retraining facility. This is where all the employees come to learn how to make electric cars and some of that involves sitting in a classroom learning about high voltage and how to look after robots but they wanted to keep that sort of thing to a minimum they wanted to keep it interactive and engaging which is why behind this door is an escape room come on this is uh this is part of the retraining process and he's going to get very cross with me because it's dark in here and you can't see much so i'm going to quickly take you through to the next one but to cut a long story short this escape room is about the past and there's a lot of clues in here to assemble puzzle pieces which educate you about the invention of electricity. Not joking. In here, we have the more recent past. We've got a timeline of influential electric people. There is Angela, there she is, down there. And then through the final door, we have escape, through number th escape room number three, which is about the present day and the future. And this is designed not only to educate VW's factory workers on these new products that they're building, but to inspire them, to get them behind the cause, to help them understand why this enormous change is happening. So as well as escape rooms, virtual reality is used as part of the education process for the staff here. I'm really hoping they're not gonna make me put the headset on because I, to be honest with you, I hate VR. I'm always worried someone's going to pull my pants down. Well, there it is, a tour of the Zwickau factory. I, I've found this whole thing quite inspiring, to be completely honest with you. Really encouraging, exciting stuff. Like I said in the beginning, this is a glimpse into the future. Every factory in the world that currently builds petrol cars is going to have to make the changes that you see here in the next five years, 10 years, or fade into insignificance. So what have we learned? How do you transform a gigantic factory into a gigantic electric car? factory well there's sort of three parts to it aren't there number one spend a lot of money refurbishing the place new robots new machinery to facilitate electric car construction number two and this is the most overlooked part retrain your workforce re-educate them help them understand how to build electric cars and just as importantly try to get them behind the cause try to get them excited about it which let's be honest easier said than done people don't like change but it has to be done and number three, and this is really important too, and we haven't talked about it enough today, try to do all of that as cleanly as possible, because if you're powering this whole endeavor by coal, a little bit counterproductive, isn't it? The good news is Wickow is on the right track. 
CO2 emissions are down about 66% in the last 10 years. And there are little things that they're doing in the production process to further reduce that number. For example, printing body panels on site, whereas they used to be shipped in from the Wolfsburg plant, that is saving you about 7,000 lorry trips a year, which I think equates to about 5,500 tonnes of CO2. It's the little things. There's room for improvement. VW will be the first to admit that, but it is, it's more than a step in the right direction. It is a shining example to other companies that are taking far too long. This is what going big on electric looks like, and you love to see it. So there we go. It's Wickow. My hands are cold. I'm gonna go in the car now, put my heated seat on. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. We're so lucky to have Jack on board. I mean, okay, he's very tall, much taller than me, but he's an amazing guy. Really knows his stuff. Just knows a lot about cars, which is I really, really appreciate. Here's another episode that Jack did, an absolute classic. Do have a look at that. That's our latest episode just come out. Up there, you can subscribe to Fully Charged Show, and up there, you can support us on Patreon. Thank you.